Hello, welcome to this uh, relatively short yoga class. It's going to be about 30 minutes, so maybe you're doing this on your lunch break, I don't know. Um, I'm Jess uh, and I will be leading you through this class. It's not going to be too crazy, nothing frightening is going to happen, but if this is your first time ever coming to a yoga class, then A, welcome. Uh, and B, if you want to watch the introduction to yoga to settle yourself into things a bit more, then please feel free. It should just be a little further down on the Sports Center's um, YouTube channel. Just scroll, I think it's called Introduction to Yoga with Jess, about five minutes, where I talk about what yoga is, what it encompasses, and uh, how you can make classes work best for you, because that's what's most important. I am giving you the structure, but this is your class, and you make it work for you. If I do something that doesn't look good or doesn't feel good when you try it, you change it. You don't have to persist with it just because I'm still doing it. And on that note, um, as many of you will know, but I will say it in case someone is watching this class that hasn't done one with me before, um, I am slogging my way through now my third month of a knee injury. So although things are better, my left leg doesn't have full range of motion in it. And so you'll see that there are some poses that I do a little differently. I will always try and make it as clear as possible when I am doing something that I don't want you to do um, because, of, because of my leg. It should be visually obvious that that's what's going on, but sometimes it's not. And like I said, I will always try and make it clear anyway. All right, with all of uh, the house chat out of the way, settling yourself down onto your mat and or in your space, into a sukhasana, an easy seated pose. It does not need to be cross-legged or this approximation of cross leg that I'm doing now. You can sit with your legs stretched out in front of you if you prefer. You can sit on some props so you can lift your seat up higher. That can make sitting cross-legged a lot easier. If you don't have props, you can use books. You can use plenty of things in the house to help you out. You can sit on your heels, so kneeling, but with your seat down. Anything that allows you to get that sense of ease that we want in our sukhasana, our sukha, our ease, our sweetness, and also keeps you alert because you are upright, because you're maintaining your neutral spine. You're relaxing your belly, you're relaxing your shoulders, you're breathing through your nose if you can. You do not have to breathe through your nose though. You can breathe through your mouth. The important thing is that the breath is steady. That your inhales roughly match in length and depth your exhales. That you start to focus in on the breath. Let it become your anchor point, something that keeps you steady throughout the class that you can return to at any time. So while you're sitting here breathing, I will tell you or remind you that I teach all of my classes with literature to provide a framework to explore some of the themes that come up in yoga philosophy anyway. Because yoga is far more than doing a warrior one on a yoga mat. It's a way of life. So this is just my way of exploring it all a little further. For this class, we are using the novel Someone to Run With by David Grossman. This book is a flight of fancy in uh, more than one meaning of the word flight. It's a book that uses the architecture of video games, both um, vocabulary wise and in structure, plot structure, because it is about two teenagers. We have Asaf, who is working a summer job at City Hall while his parents are uh, in America for the summer. And he is tasked with finding the owner of a stray dog, Dinka. And so he sets off into the streets with Dinka, who starts literally pulling him on a chase looking for her mistress. 
Our other narrative thread is the other teenager, Tamar. She is the owner of Dinka and she has, she's a very talented singer and she has deliberately gone into the city's underworld in order to find and rescue her addict brother. And these two threads run roughly parallel for a while until obviously they join for the pinnacle of the book. Many aspects of this novel strain credulity. For example, one of the main characters is an old Greek nun who has not left her house for 50 years, literally not gone past the threshold. But that is in many ways almost the point. Each character, each personage that uh, peoples the pages, they are a sign or a signifier or a means for Asaf and Tamar to get a bit more information, move further forwards, um, empower them a little more, mature them slightly, i.e. they're the way markers needed on a quest, such as you would find in a video game. All of this packages a story of maturation and stories of maturation are always very important, but this is done in order here to sharpen the flashes of life in modern Jerusalem that we see and how much in a volatile society the political and the external will constantly affect the personal and the internal. Natural family tensions are raised to new heights by what happens outside the family home, ideologically. And that is something that I think that we have started to learn. Because prior to the pandemic, in many ways, I know not always, British society was not a relatively volatile society. But now we understand how external factors that we have no control over and that are on the macro level seriously affect the micro level of our own lives. And this book might just show us ways of handling that, ways of dealing with it. Maybe this book and by extension practice of yoga can help us face up to this intrusive volatility with more equanimity, more strength. Even here they were with him in the blink of an eye, arguing. Reli muttered that every deserted village like this was an open wound in the heart of Israeli society. And Rhino would patiently respond that if it had been the other way around, then her house would look like this, and which did she prefer? As if standing in for his mother's ritual, banal, last word on their debate, her attempt to make peace, a dove flew over Asaf's head, mottled and very fat. When its feet touched the railing, Asaf flinched. It seemed that her weight might make the entire porch collapse. You're going to have three more breaths here. And then inhaling, blinking your eyes open if they weren't already. You're going to bring your right leg so that it's half bent in. And what I mean by that is your right foot will be roughly level with your right knee. So making a sort of nice straight line of the shin. And then you're going to pick up your left foot. Swing your left leg across you and see if you can tuck the left foot into the crook of the right elbow. This might not feel easy. It almost certainly won't. So please don't worry or panic. See if you can wrap your left arm around so that you are cradling your left lower leg in both arms. You might find, I'll turn to the side, you might find that this leaves you feeling like this. That you're really curled over and it's quite hard to breathe. I know that feeling. Don't panic about it. See if you can try to drop the shoulders and lift the sternum slightly. Just see if you can make a little bit of space here to allow you to breathe. Try to sit up taller, but don't worry about it too much. You'll probably find it's very hard to sit straight in this position. If you can, see if you can keep the foot at the same level as your knee. So you probably find that as I talk, it will start to dip down. See if you can just gently lift it back up again. Also see if you can squeeze the whole leg 
in towards your chest a little more without losing that nice upright seat. We're only here for another two breaths. And on your next exhalation, let the foot free of the crook of the arm, but catch it before it drops in both hands. And as you inhale, push it straight up away in front of you. You do not need to be able to straighten the leg. Just like I was just saying, you are still trying to keep the shoulders down, but the chest up so that you feel open in the upper chest. Space to breathe. One more breath like this. Next exhalation, let go of that foot and see if you can slowly lower it down, stretching it away. And you might want to tuck your right foot a little closer in to the left thigh. Turn your chest towards that left leg. Your left leg is straight out and away. Sit tall. And on an exhalation, you're gonna softly fold over your left leg. Two more breaths here. Don't worry about how close to your leg you get. Just extend forwards over it. And then inhale, sitting yourself up. Bring in that left leg, about halfway in, so it's roughly heel level with knee, and pop up that right foot, swinging it in front of you. See if you can tuck the right foot into the crook of the left elbow. See if you can wrap the right arm around. All the same things as before. Can you sit a little taller without squeezing your shoulders up by your ears? Can you lift the foot a little higher, trying to aim for it to be level with the knee? Do not worry if that doesn't actually happen. Just keep actively lifting it. Can you squeeze the whole leg into your chest a little bit more, hugging it, cradling it in your arms? Keep breathing steadily. You've got three more breaths. And on your next exhalation, release the foot, grabbing it with both hands and inhale, push it up and away from you. Again, you do not need to worry about the leg being straight. Keep your shoulders down, keep your chest up and keep the foot pressing firmly into the hands. Last breath. And as you next exhale, let go of the foot and see if you can really slowly lower it down. So with some control. And then you might need to tuck the left foot higher up into the right thigh. I'm gonna leave my foot where it is. Turn your chest towards your right foot. You sit tall and on an exhalation, folding over that right leg. You're not worried about getting your hands on your foot. It's not important. You can if you like. If you can get your hands on your foot without the shoulders coming up by the ears and without the chest closing off, then feel free. I prefer having them down here anyway, on the floor. Two more breaths here. And next inhalation, sitting yourself upright. And then you're gonna cross that right ankle over the left and then either rock yourself forwards or if that's not possible, just swing your legs around and you're coming to all fours. And when you're ready, left toes tucking underneath and on an exhalation, lift yourself up and back into downward dog, into that inverted V shape. We're going to run through our downward dog checklist. So spread your hands really wide, spread your fingers and feel that you can press into each joint of each finger, equally pressing into the mat. You can use that pressure to send the chest back towards the feet. You're looking at your feet or your knees so the back of the neck feels long. You're feeling your sit bones tip up and back and then there's a swoosh down the back of the legs as the heels squeeze towards the mat. They do not need to touch the mat. That's just the direction they're going in. Have another breath here. Then inhale, lift your right leg up and at the top, bend it. We're going to circle our right leg, keeping it bent three times with the breath. Inhale, pull your right knee in towards your chest. And as you exhale, open it out to the side and all the way up and around. And again, inhale in, out, up as we exhale. Inhale in, exhale out and up 
big rotations of the hip. Next exhalation, you can just put that right foot down. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, bend it at the top there. Are you ready? Inhale, pull it in. Exhale, open and up. Inhale, pull it in. Exhale, big circle. One more. Inhale. Exhale, put the foot down. Inhale, walk your feet towards your hands, leaving them hip width apart. Exhale in a forward fold here in Uttanasana. Make sure the head is heavy and the arms are heavy. Now they do not need to be touching the mat. You can hold your elbows if you prefer, making a little cradle of the arms. What we want to see though is the weight forwards, pressing into the balls of the feet, not sinking into the heels. And we want a head nice and heavy. We don't want to be holding it up in any way. Let the back of the neck be long. And on your next inhalation, slowly roll yourself upright. Take your time. Shoulders roll back at the top there. Gaze lifts front of the mats if you're not already there. I am going to do these vinyasas with slightly bent legs. You can as well if you like, but the normal way, if such a thing exists, is with the legs straight when they can be straight. Next inhalation, stretching up. Exhale, folding all the way down. Inhale, lift your fingertips, look forwards. You can lift higher than the fingertips. Exhale, right foot steps back, then the left, drop your knees, your chest and your chin. Inhale, lift your upper chest only. This is your cobra, elbows back. Exhale, rolling your way back to downward dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look forwards. The right foot steps in, the left foot joins. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweeping your way up, arms up. Exhale, arms down. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, folding forwards. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, left foot all the way back. Then the right, knees, chest, chin coming down. Inhale, that cobra, it's not very high. Elbows back. Exhale, rolling back, downward dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look forwards, left foot stepping in, then the right. Exhale as you fold. Inhale, sweeping up. Exhale, hands down. We're gonna have another one like that. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, get your feet back. You can lower through Chaturanga if you're familiar with it, or it's knees, chest, chin. Inhaling in Cobra or Upward Facing Dog if you're familiar. And exhale, Adha Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. So have three breaths here. Now on the next inhalation, bend the knees, look forwards, get those feet in. Exhale as you fold. And inhale, sweeping up. Exhale, ready for our first variation, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, get your feet back. Lower yourself down, either way it's up to you. Inhale in your back bend. And exhale, up and back. Adha Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, the right leg is coming up. Exhale, step the foot through between the hands if you can. Some wiggling is absolutely fine. And you're going to drop the left knee down as you exhale, untuck the left toes. Inhale, reach the arms up. You're coming into an Anjani Asana, a crescent lunge. The hips sink forwards. As you can see, I've put a prop underneath my left knee, my Moomin cushion, uh, because I need some support and some padding there. You can too. You can use blankets, you can use cushions, you can fold your mat over again, whatever you need to do. Keeping the arms up, on your next inhalation, you're going to very carefully pop up the back heel. That's all, just squeeze it up. Exhale, let it come back down. Inhale, squeeze it up. Exhale, let it come back down. Inhale, squeeze it up and hold it up. The hips are still moving forward, so though you'll be tempted to push them back. Squeeze the heel in towards the seat. This is an active stretch. I'm falling over. <laughs> and active stretches are much better for us. They're much more stabilizing than passive stretches. One more breath. Next exhalation, you can let that foot come down and inhale, push into the right leg. She's gonna straighten up. Exhale, dropping the hands down. 
either side of that right foot. We're not staying in this position for too long. Inhale, shift the weight forwards. Exhale, push it back again. Keep your hands down where they were. Inhale, shift it forwards. Exhale, press the seat back. And again, inhale. Exhale, press back. Stay pressed back this time so you can move your hands. You can have, bring them closer to you. You can put them on your hips if you like here. Just another two breaths. And then on your next inhalation, shift the weight into that front foot again. Tuck your back toes. Carefully step back into a downward dog. Have a breath. Inhale the left leg up. Exhale, step that foot through in between your hands. Drop your right knee, untuck your right toes. Inhaling, Anjani Asana. Reach high. Hips sink forwards and down, but there is lift starting from the pelvic floor, up through the core, all the way up through the crown of the head and the tips of the fingers. Have another breath here. Ready to be careful. Inhale, pick up that back foot. Exhale, let it go back down. Inhale, squeeze it up. Exhale, let it drop. Inhale, squeeze it up. Hold it here. Squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it in towards your seat as the hip, hips drop forwards and down and the arms keep reaching up. Everything stays energetic. One more breath. Exhale, let it drop back down. Inhale, straighten up that left leg as much as you can. Yours is straighter than mine. And exhale, folding forwards. Let those hands reach a little further forwards than you might ordinarily have them. And inhale, shift the weight into the left foot. Keep the hands down. Exhale, press back. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale, press back and stay pressed back. Seat squeezing back, hands can be adjusted however you like, they can move towards you, they can come up a little higher, you can use props, you can put them on your hips, find what's right for you. Two more breaths. Inhale, shift your foot weight into the front foot, tuck the back toes, sweeping up and back, downward dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look towards your hands, get your feet in. Exhale as you fold. And inhale, sweeping all the way up. Exhale, hands down, good. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, prepare. Exhale, get your feet back, lower yourselves down, keep the belly and the arms strong. Inhale in that back bend. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, lift the right leg up. Exhale, step the foot through in between your hands. Swing your left heel down. Inhale, cartwheel the arms so you're coming up into a warrior two. Now your left leg is straight, not like mine. Yours is nice and straight and you're pushing into the left heel. You're looking over the right fingernails, bending firmly into that right leg, your Virabhadrasana two. Another breath here. Exhale, drop your left hand onto your left hip. Look forwards and down, and you're gonna reach your right hand down beyond your right toes. You're probably gonna to have to hop your left foot a little bit. You'll see what I mean. On your next inhalation, hop in the foot or just lift it straight up. You can use props here, or you can keep your standing leg bent, whatever you need to do. And see if you can open the chest out to the side. So the left side of the pelvis is lifting above the right, and the left shoulder is lifting above the right shoulder. Keep your left leg strong and lift it as high as you can. So what I mean by that is just don't let it go floppy. Don't forget about it. Ardha Chandrasana, one more breath. Moving nothing but your left leg on your next exhalation. Bend it. Inhale, straighten it. Exhale, bend it. Good. Inhale, straighten it. And another one. Exhale. Inhale, straighten. Hold it here as you inhale. Exhale, you can drop the left hand down and step the left foot all the way back down the mat so you're in a lunge. Inhale, pop up the right foot and drop your right knee to touch your right wrist. 
So drop the right knee and press it against the inside of the right wrist. You can slide or wiggle that left leg away. You can untuck the toes if you can. And you're here in your pigeon. You may want something underneath the right hand side of the seat because what we don't want to do is to sit and stay in this space here because you can probably see I'm very, very twisted. I'm gonna try and keep everything up in the middle. Again, you may want padding underneath your back leg, back knee. I'm gonna have to just tuck my toes because on our next inhalation, we're gonna pull in that back foot. Exhale, drop it. Inhale, squeeze it in. Feel the chest puff forwards, exhale down. One more. Inhale, squeeze it in, hold it here. Chest puffs forwards, it's why it's called pigeon. Last breath. Exhale, let that foot go. We can briefly now sit into the space underneath the right-hand side of the seat so that you can extend your right leg away from you as well. So you're gonna be diagonally on your mat in a straddle pose. Next inhalation, arms are gonna reach up high. Exhale, fold yourself forwards. Now you do not need to be able to get your belly down onto the mat. You do not even have to put your forearms down if you don't want to. You can keep the arms straight and the back nice and long because again, we don't want to curve into this fold. We want to lengthen forwards into it. Just two more breaths here. Next inhalation, sitting yourself upright. Turn your gaze, your chest, your arms towards the front of the mat again. Put the ball of the left foot down and just press into your hands so you can swing that right foot underneath you in your back in downward dog. Have a breath. Inhale the left leg up. Exhale, step it through. Right heel swings down. Inhale, cartwheel those arms. Warrior two again, Virabhadrasana two. Look over the left fingernails. Keep the arms strong. Bend into that left leg. On your next exhalation, you're gonna drop your right hand to your right hip. Look forwards, look down. Reach that left hand beyond the left toes. Hop as many times as you like on an inhale to be able to lift that right leg up. Use props, keep your standing leg bent. Do what you need to do. Keep your lifted leg strong and steady. Don't forget about it. Open the chest out to the side. Use your left hand, your supporting hand here. Press into it. And then on your next exhalation, just bend that right leg. Exhale, straighten it. Inhale. Exhale. One more. Good. And now as you exhale, you're gonna drop the right hand, step the right foot all the way down the mat so you're in a lunge with your hands down. Inhale, pop up the left foot and drop the left knee to touch the inside of the left wrist. Same wrist as knee, same knee as wrist. Wiggle that right foot back, untuck those toes. I can't actually do pigeon on this side, so I'm gonna do a very odd, very upright version of it here. So you're trying to get your hips nice and low. You're trying not to sit into that space underneath the left-hand side. Right leg is stretched away behind you. Hands are down to support you. Feel how already without the foot lifting, the chest starts to puff forwards. And then when you're ready, inhale, lift up that back foot. Exhale, let it go back down. Inhale, lift. Exhale, drop. Inhale, lift it. Squeeze it in there. Squeeze it, squeeze it. Chest puffs forwards. Last breath. Exhale, let the foot come down. Briefly sit into that space underneath the left-hand side of the seat. Stretch the left leg away. You're in that straddle position again. Inhale the arms up and exhale, fold forwards. In your straddle fold. Just notice that you're not jutting your chin forwards in your straddle fold. You want it to be just slightly tucked so the back of the neck, the cervical spine is in line with the rest of the spine, long and easy. Three more breaths here.
And on your next inhalation, gently walk yourself upright. This time, you're gonna swing your left foot to meet your right. And you can just shift yourself so you're in the center of your mat. Bring the soles of the feet together. Not too far, not too close to you, so you've made a nice diamond shape with your legs. Dropping your hands underneath your calves. On your next exhalation, send your hands forwards as you let yourself curl into yourself. Now you really can let the spine curl. You're not trying to extend forwards now. You're just making yourself into a little diamond shaped ball for three breaths. Next inhalation, gently get your hands back so that you can sit up. And it is time for you to take your couple of minutes of Shavasana, your rest here. So you're gonna roll down to lie flat on your back. If lying flat on your back is not comfortable for you and it's not for lots of people, usually what might help is if you bend the legs in. So you could be lying down, bend the feet in. You could knock your knees together so that you don't have to worry about holding your legs up. See if you can bring your hands down a little away from your sides with your palms up. The most important thing about Shavasana is that you are comfortable, that you're not too cold, that there isn't a muscle or a joint that's sort of screaming at you here. You need to get as close as possible to release as you can. And once you've found it, you need to actually release. Let go, drop into your mat. Breathing soft and steady, eyes closed. You need someone with a big hand, Leia pronounced. You know why? Why she knew she would now be painted a picture. Someone who will stand with his hand up, open, strong, steady, like the Statue of Liberty, but without the ice cream cone. Only his hand, open, in the air. And then Leia raised her square, rough, nail-bitten hand and moved it gently from side to side, like a flying bird. Even from far away, from any place in the world, you'd see that hand and know you had a place to land and rest. You're going to slightly deepen your breath now. And just make that inhale a little longer. Extend that exhale a bit. and use the extra breath to wake you up. Move your fingers and toes just a little bit, a flicker is fine. And then when you're ready, you're gonna roll over onto your right hand side and take a moment there. Moving slowly, trying to keep your eyes closed, your gaze soft, you're gonna push yourself upright Make your way back into your Sukhasana. That's the easy seated pose that you started in. 
the one that allowed you to place the weight equally, evenly even, between the sit bones, to maintain that nice neutral spine with the soft shoulders and the soft belly, relaxing your face muscles and breathing steadily. This idea that I talked about at the beginning of the class of how if you live in a society that's got more kind of external pressures, that it ends up being a strain even on the most micro level. It's a burden upon a burden upon a burden. I think perhaps understanding this, especially coming from a society, if like me, you do come from a society that's not like that, can really help us in these times. This understanding, this snapshot of what it's like to live in that way, how everything is infected with stress, essentially. It can give us more compassion towards each other and how we have all handled it, how we continue to handle it. I know that people that practice yoga tend to have a lot of compassion anyway, but we can always remind ourselves. We can always keep working on something as important as that. So I'll leave you with the last quotation for the class from David Grossman's Someone to Run With. There are some people for whom even 50 years in one room are not suffocating, and for some, a whole country is not enough space. Blinking your eyes open if they weren't already. Thank you so much for doing this class with me. Um, my Instagram handle, I think, is in the caption or perhaps my website, don't know. You can get to kind of either of those through, through either one. Um, so I'm always available through those routes to ask uh, any questions. Um, if you don't want to do that or it's not there, then you can always ask the Sports Centre staff to get a message to me if you want to email me, because um, I'm very aware that I can't be here if you've got any questions about yoga, the class or anything like that. But I am here. You can ask me those questions just at a slight digital remove. And I hope that I will see you again soon in one of these classes. Thank you.